I, I would recommend, too, uh, reading a piece by Eric Fair in the New York Times. He's, a, uh, he's teaching creative writing at Lehigh University. And uh, his students call him professor. I don't know if he's actual a professor, but he's definitely teaching. He, um, he also was an interrogator at Abu Ghraib and says that he tortured. He's written uh, newspaper articles. He's done interviews on TV and radio. He's spoken to groups from Amnesty International. I've confessed everything to a lawyer from the Department of Justice and two agents from the Army's Criminal Investigation Command, he writes. I've said everything there is to say. It's, it's not hard to pretend the best thing to do is to put it all behind me. Uh, and he's, he's writing about how this report has brought it up and how no matter how anybody sees him, he sees himself as a torturer. But what's instructive uh, for our purposes at this moment is he writes, the, the Senate released its torture report. Many people were surprised by what it contained. Accounts of waterboardings far more frequent than had been previously reported, week-long sleep deprivation, a horrific and humiliating procedure called rectal rehydration. I'm not surprised. I assure you there is more. Much remains redacted. So again, we're not getting the full story. And so here's the thing. If we as Americans have to cede to the administration, to our government, the authority to keep 5,500 pages of this redacted or from, uh, from beyond our ability to see, and all that also remains out there that we're not allowed to see. If we must see that, then we can expect from them a higher level of responsibility to address it than the American public. If you want to say the American public is not, uh, is not worried about torture, the majority is not worried about torture, and actually put some value on that, then you must release everything. But for those who have full disclosure, it is incumbent upon them to take other steps. So this failure of the Obama administration to hold these people accountable, even in light of all of this, they failed to do it in 2009, too. The failure of them to hold accountable is they might as well be giving them all medals. At the end of the day, it's going to have the same impact. And frankly, they have the same moral culpability. They, they are not quite authorizing it, but they're authorizing it, but they are. <laughs> because by not holding these people responsible, they're basically saying, you've got a green light for the future. We may not want to be part of it, but the green light's there. Because who, who, who's going, to, who, who's going to, to show the red light? I mean, honestly. And you could say they rolled back, uh, they, they made it more explicit that there's no torture if you're in uh, on American territory, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm sorry. If you don't hold these people accountable, you, the, you are basically saying like, it's really just a function of the context. We could afford to make it illegal in 2009 explicitly, even though it was obviously illegal in 2001. But in the future, you got a green light. Because the worst that's going to happen to you is you're going to get promoted and you're, gonna, you're just not going to see your family as much because you're going to be so busy at work.